In this video, we're going to look at link aggregation, which allows us to bond multiple physical interfaces into a single virtual interface to increase throughput in campus LAN environments. Now, as mentioned previously, terminology can cause issues. Once again, on E-series switches or Pro-curve switches, link aggregation is referred to as trunking. On A-series or H3C switches, this is known as link aggregation, and on Cisco switches, this is known as ether channel. What we're doing here is bonding multiple physical interfaces into a single logical interface to increase throughput. So in this example, we're going to bind ports A2 and A4 into a single logical link connecting to switch edge 1 on ports 1 and 3. Ports A3 and A6 are going to connect to ports 1 and 3 on edge 2. But these ports are seen as a logical single interface to higher layer protocols such as spanning tree. The advantage of doing this is to increase throughput. If you had, for example, 20 PCs connected to edge 1, you might want to enable two uplinks, both for redundancy and for additional throughput. There are two primary ways to set up a trunk or link aggregation. You can either enable static port trunking by using the command trunk. Now I'll demonstrate link aggregation in a moment, so don't worry too much about the commands. Just try and get an understanding of what we're trying to accomplish here. So we could bond multiple ports together by creating a static trunk. The second method is to use link aggregation control protocol or LACP, also known as LACP. LACP is supported by multiple vendors and is used widely in the industry. Be careful, however, on E-series switches or Pro-curve switches, we have what is called static LACP and dynamic LACP. Dynamic LACP allows for the dynamic joining of new interfaces in a trunk. So as an example, if we had configured the trunk between edge one and the router to use two physical interfaces, but there were actually three physical interfaces connected between those two devices, LACP would put two interfaces in the trunk. And if one of those interfaces went down, the third available interface would then be added to the trunk. This sounds nice because you can dynamically add additional interfaces to a trunk when one of the physical interfaces go down. It, however, has huge disadvantages. Because this is a dynamic trunk, you cannot specify the VLANs that go across that trunk. That's a major problem because trunking is normally used on uplinks where we want to allow multiple VLANs. However, if dynamic LACP is used in an E-series or Pro-curve environment, you have no control over the VLANs that can traverse that trunk. As an example, only VLAN 1 would be permitted. So it sounds nice in theory to have two active links and a third standby link, but in reality, it's not practical. So in the real world, and in this lab, I'm only going to show you two methods. We're going to use static port trunking and static LACP. We are not going to use dynamic LACP. Now here's a trick question for you. Let's assume for the moment that PC2 has a gigabit link to edge 1. The two uplinks on port 1 and 3 are running at 100 megabits per second and PC1 is connected to the 5406 using a gigabit link. So port 24 on edge 1 and port A5 on the 5406 are running at 1 gigabits per second. Let's assume for this example that the uplinks are running at 100 megabits per second. Now in the real world you wouldn't do this 
but just for this example, to make a point, let's assume that that's how this network has been configured. So the question is, what is the throughput from PC2 to PC1? Is it 1 gigabits per second, 200 megabits per second, or 100 megabits per second? Just to recap, the ports connecting edge 1 to the router are running at 100 megabits per second, but there are two ports, port 24 on edge 1 and port A5 on the router are set to 1 gigabits per second. What is the maximum speed from PC2 to PC1? And the answer is 100 megabits per second, not 200 megabits per second. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you that link aggregation does not do load balancing by default across multiple ports. It uses a fancy algorithm to choose an outbound physical interface based on source and destination MAC address. So when PC2 is talking to PC1, one of the ports on edge 1 is selected as the outbound port, not both. If multiple PCs were connected to edge 1, then in that case, traffic from different hosts or PCs would traverse different uplinks, thus giving you a throughput in theory of 200 megabits per second. Let's enable link aggregation or trunking or ether channel, whichever term you prefer, between the 5406 router and edge 1, as well as the 5406 and edge 2. So on the 5406, a2 and A4 will be bonded together to form a link aggregation to edge 1 ports 1 and 3. On the 5406 ports A3 and A6 will be bonded together to form a link aggregation or trunk to ports 1 and 3 on edge 2. Now before enabling trunking as it's known on E-series devices I'm going to enable spanning tree Spanning tree is by default disabled on E-series switches. So as soon as I plug these links in, we're going to have a loop which could bring down the entire network. So telnetting to the 5406, login as manager with our password, conf t, spanning tree, enter. That's how you enable basic spanning tree, which is by default multiple spanning tree on an HP E-series switch. Telnet 10.0.0.101 Edge 1 Edge 2 And you'll notice that um, my connection has been dropped Spanning tree is calculating which links need to be blocked and permitted So what I should have done is I should have telneted to edge 3 first, enable spanning tree on it, then edge 2, and then the router. So let's see if we can get through to edge 2 now. There we go. So telnet to edge 3. So show spanning tree shows me that multiple spanning tree has been enabled. You can see here that STP is enabled. Edge 2 shows show spanning tree rather. Shows me that spanning tree has also been enabled. Edge 1. Spanning tree has also been enabled. And lastly on the router shows spanning tree. And you can see spanning tree has also been enabled on the router. So I've enabled spanning tree on our switches. I am now going to plug in the additional links between edge 1 and the router and edge 2 and the router. So the cables have been plugged in. Let's check the interfaces. So on the 5406 acting as our router 
show interface brief, you can see ports A1 to A6 are all displaying a status of up. We could also do the command show LLDP info remote devices and you can see here that edge 1 is connected to port A2 as well as port A4. Edge 2 is connected to port A3 as well as port A6 which is correct as per our diagram. You can see once again edge 1 is connected to port A2, A4 which it is here A2, A4 edge 2 is connected to port A3, A6 which it is over here A3 and A6 so our physical cabling has been done however if we type the command show spanning tree you can see for example that port A6 is blocking spanning tree has blocked this port so no traffic will traverse this link A6 it's as if the port is unplugged no user traffic will traverse that link having a look on edge 1 so show spanning tree you can see for example that port 3 is blocking so on this switch this port A3 is logically unplugged or logically blocking spanning tree is not permitting any user traffic across this link now we'll talk more about spanning tree later on in the course but I just want you to realize that spanning tree has blocked various links no user traffic will be allowed out of port A6 and port 3 those ports have logically been blocked so let's set up link aggregation or trunking and see if spanning tree will allow traffic across both ports so let's start with edge 1 so on edge 1 we're going to type the command trunk specify a port list so port 1 and 3 add it to a trunk group so let's say TRK1 and are we going to allow LACP to be used or are we going to manually set up a trunk with no protocol so on this one let's specify trunk and you'll notice now when hitting enter nothing happens now suddenly it kicks back into life spanning tree did a recalculation because something changed on the network so let's configure edge 2 and then lastly I'll configure the router so on edge 2 trunk the ports that we're going to add to the trunk are 1 and 3 we're going to use TRK1 now this is just a local trunk group it doesn't have to be the same on both sides so on edge 2 as an example we're going to use TRK1 for the link to the 5406 but we'll use trunk 2 or TRK2 on the 5406 to connect back to edge 2 on this switch let's use LACP so once again I've lost my connection let's go back let's now configure the 5406 now if you remember we configured edge 1 to use trunk in other words no negotiation but we configured edge 2 to use LACP in other words dynamic negotiation of the trunk or link aggregation so on the 5406 in global configuration mode we're going to type trunk A2 A4 give it a trunk group of let's say TRK1 and in this case we are not going to use a protocol so we're just going to specify trunk create another trunk for A3 A6 and in this case We'll use TRK group 2 LACP. Spanning tree is doing a recalculation, so I've lost my connectivity. So hopefully, shortly, it'll settle down 
and we'll have a connection back to our equipment. You can see I've lost my Telnet session. Try and Telnet again. There we go. So login as manager. Password is HP. And we're on our router. So if we type show spanning tree, you can see that it says port A1 forwarding and port A5 forwarding. But it does not display ports A2, A4, A3 or A6. We have to scroll down and here you'll notice that it says TRK1 and TRK2 are forwarding with the speeds of the interfaces. So from a spanning tree point of view, and once again I'll explain spanning tree in more detail later, what I'd like you to see is that spanning tree is forwarding across all four ports because they've been added to a trunk and a trunk acts as a single interface from spanning trees point of view. Typing the command show trunk and let's just hit enter you can see that port A2 and A4 are part of TRK group 1. The type is trunk so there's no negotiation but port A3 and A6 are part of TRK2 and are using LACP. So it's as simple as that to set up trunking, also known as link aggregation on A-series devices, also known as Ether channel on Cisco devices. We could type the command show interface brief and let's look at A2. And you can see that port A2 is part of TRK1. The interface is enabled. The mode is 100 full duplex. The port is enabled and the status is up. Looking at A4, you can see something similar, or A3, you can see it's 1000 full duplex rather than 100 full duplex as it was on port A4. A6, you can see once again 1000 full duplex. So if we type the command show trunks, you can see the type is 100, 1000. If we type the command show LLDP info remote devices, notice you can still see edge one and edge two showing up on two physical ports. But now the big gotcha, you need to be careful of this. If we type the command show VLAN and let's say VLAN 10, notice VLAN 10 is not configured on any interfaces. Show VLAN 20, not configured on any interfaces.